second stage of contraction is different from the first, as the motion here is isometric. There is practically no motion here. We just position the patient during the first stage, and the patient is just standing. We have positioned the muscle during the first phase, and now we're just asking the patient to press so that you could feel it contracts isometrically. Now, without changing the muscle length, we're asking the patient to increase the resistance. Normally, you can increase your resistance being in the isometric contraction. This is the law of statics. As soon as the person gets up, the person starts falling down first and then the muscles increase their tones so to such an extent that his body is stable. And this case, we don't even know why we stand. We talk, move our hands, do something. We have no clue why and how our legs stand because it is controlled by proprioceptors and interoceptors. Thus, at stage two, after we have performed the motion, we just need to keep the isometric contraction and see if it can increase. Press, press, press more. Here it increases, while here it doesn't. Don't press too much. Don't press too much. Just a little. And now look what nice pallidum tremor we are having. It was described by Nikolai Bernstein. It shows that due to some reasons, the muscle lacks adaptability and it can't keep its tonic contraction to perform the static activity. Mistakes at stage two. Many students start pressing upon the patient's body right away. Muscular testing turns to some sort of fighting. You don't need to press. You can just place one finger here. Why do you need to press? There is some resistance already. Start pressing later to increase the resistance. But if you press too much, you overstretch the muscle. The patient presses not with one muscle, but with his whole body. Mistake two. Some patients press against us too much. The patient's force is stronger than yours. Why is that dangerous? As soon as isometric contraction turns into stretching or muscular contraction, the patient's brain is activated. So we miss the patient's subconscious reaction completely, and I don't know what exactly we're testing in this case. It's terrible, because many students learned how to test using videos at our offline classes we tell our students a lot about the rules of testing but we tell them very little at our online classes maybe that's why people just copy the motions without understanding what they do they don't understand what they need to do if you can't visit offline classes dear colleagues but if you want to understand why you are not successful with muscular testing you must understand that at stage two you should keep isometric contraction and have no muscular stretching or contraction. The muscle length should be stable. It shouldn't move. The patient should stand like this, like this. Only in this case, the muscular tone will increase. I just imitate the static state. Now I'm asking the patient to press upon me a little. Now, after you've pressed a little, try increasing the pressure. If the patient stands, if he's able to do that, the length is stable. The tone should increase. But if we have some jerky motions, tremor-like motions instead of resistance, it means that his muscular tone is not enough. He can't adequately react to loads. It's not only the muscle, but the whole body that communicates with us. The most essential is that you should have only isometric contraction. And next, you press for a longer time, very quickly, for one and a half or two seconds. It's the matter of experience only. It's only the matter of experience. Stage three of muscular contraction. It's the easiest, but it causes the largest number of mistakes. 
When at stage 1, you have the muscular contraction. When at stage 2, you have isometric contraction. You can't let it go. You should stretch the muscle for a while against the increased stress or strain. Many people do it as follows. Please press. Press again and then hit upon the arm. Your goal is to do it step by step. Muscular testing. You must you first perform muscular contraction at stage 1. You lift the patient's arm and the muscle contracts. Then stage 2 starts. Here is the muscle that has already contracted. The person holds his arm owing to his effort. And you ask the patient to press harder. Stage 3. It's contraction. Stretching. It's stretching. The muscular strain should increase quantitatively. First, it should increase in contraction. Then, it should increase in the isometric muscular strain. And then comes muscular stretching. If you have some pause between these motions, you will just test muscular stretching alone. It should happen when the muscle is strained. We imitate the motion the person performs in life. One lifts his arm, one's arm, then one strains the muscle and performs a certain motion. That's why, to test the muscle correctly, you have to study all three stages of contraction. Don't hurry. As Nikolai Bernstein used to say, to learn to do something properly, you have to comprehend and understand why we need, e need each of the stages. If the patient's muscular tone is compromised, he tries to perform motions differently, and you must understand how the patient does it. If the muscle is hypotonic, it loses its excitability and the motion wouldn't start. Thus, we have to engage the motion on purpose, because the patient failed to use the muscle for a long time and the patient doesn't know how to do this. That's why we need to do much to stabilize the subscapular muscle. We need to stabilize both attachment points and only after that we perform the motion. Mistakes at stage 3. I describe them in detail. The first mistake is when you have breakups. The second mistake is when you just press against the muscle and the patient falls down. This is a reflex. You have to stretch the muscle as much as it can stretch on its own. If the muscle is small and it is at the level of your finger, you don't have to apply the force, the whole force. You have to reach the resistance, which is adequate to the muscle force. Press it here, please. Press adequately. That's why you should use two fingers only in the beginning. Press and press again to feel the difference. After that, start working with the muscles. Press, press again, and stretch. If you try too hard, you just inhibit the muscle. If you don't try hard enough, the muscle won't work. Your experience is very important. Now you understand what you must do, and you have to perform the same thing several times. Try again and again till you get the results. How do we analyze the results? You perform three stages of contraction. What should you do with them afterwards? There are several variants of reaction. Normotonic, normoreflexogenic muscles, insufficient and excessive reaction. We understand what normal reaction is. We know what it is. The muscle contracts well on its own. Stage Two is good here, the same as the reaction to stretch. Muscles with reduced reflexes demonstrate good contraction during stage one, backwards a little, a little more, 
there seems to be some resistance. But when I ask the person to resist more, she can't. She can't increase the resistance. There is only tremor here. Uh, but it's much more difficult to determine the muscle demonstrating hyperexcitability. Why? Because a hyperexcited muscle frequently shows that the body is toxic. That the body is toxic, so that the nervous system can't react to inhibiting impulses of the body. There are several ways to see, to assess if the muscle is hypertonic. Can you see the board? The muscle has two opposite antagonistic reflexes. The reflex in the tendon Golgi organ and the reflex in the tendinous fiber. As soon as the spinal cord receives the single signal that the muscle must contract, the signal that the muscle must contract, the muscular fibers contract according to the law, all or none. They contract as much as they can, as strongly as they can. The tendon Golgi organ gets stimulated, it signals, and the muscles get suppressed. This is a normal reaction. If the muscle is normotonic, I'll try to excite the tendon Golgi organ, and the muscle should become hypertonic. I am checking. Press, press, press more. The muscle is normotonic. But is it? I'm finding the tendon Golgi organ, the muscle which is attached here, and I'm stretching it. Can you see? I am stretching it from both sides and checking the muscular reaction. Press, press again. This muscle is normotonic. If there were no reaction, it would be hypotonic. Our chair sells special magnets. Look at this nice wooden box, handmade, but it's not for jewelry, it's for a magnet. The magnet is very strong, so we keep it in the wooden box so that it doesn't attach to metal objects. It has a very nice northern sign on it. If you perform the testing of this muscle, of exactly this muscle, and not with some other, not with some supraspinal or subscapular. If you place the magnet where the nerve gets into the muscle, I can reduce the muscle excitability. If the muscle is normotonic, I place the northern pole onto the muscle belly and I see there is some reaction. Press, press more. Yes, you see, here we have something. Here we have the nerve fiber orifice. This is the second signal. I'm checking, I'm checking here the clavicular muscle. Press again. And I'm checking again if there is some reaction. Do you see the muscle belly? I'm positioning it here and I'm checking if there is any reaction. I'm checking if the muscle is normotonic. If due to some reason the patient's muscle doesn't get normotonic after the activation of the tendon Golgi organ, or as a response to the magnet localization, it means that it is initially not subject to inhibition, it is hyper excited. You can't use this muscle for the reaction, it can't adequately reflect the body's information. You need special methods to correct it. This is the difference between the normal tone and the hypertonic, hypertonic state. If the muscle is normotonic, it adequately reduces its tone, reacting to the outgoing impulses of the tendon Golgi organ or to the magnet. If the muscle fails to react to these actions, it means it is, it is hyperexcited, and you have to search for the other ways to reduce its irritability. 
If you have some questions, please feel free to ask them.